Kare Shalom. Welcome to our watercolor journey. We are showcasing a few different techniques today, so stick around to see what happens. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have Indian Yellow, Indanthrin Blue, Permanent Rose, a grey premix of Indian Yellow, Indanthrin Blue and Permanent Rose, Lilac, a purple premix of Indanthrin Blue and Permanent Rose, and a reddish premix of Indian Yellow and Permanent Rose and a green premix of Indanthrin Blue and Indian Yellow. Heinrich also uses Winsor & Newton's Permanent White Gouache. Color alternatives are listed below. The Milford paper is on a block and Heinrich used masking tape to create a border. Heinrich uses the Rubens No. 1 Hake brush to wet the entire paper. He will paint the sky wet on wet to create soft clouds. He uses the silver black velvet number no. 8 round to paint the sky. He starts with dabs of indanthrin blue and then adds touches of the purple premix and lilac to create variation. He leaves plenty of white spaces to preserve the light. For the shadows, he adds a few touches of the grey premix. He doesn't fiddle too much with the paint but allows it to mix freely in the wet environment. The sky is darker at the top of the picture plane and he will make it a bit lighter near the horizon to create depth. He rinses the brush and smooths out the horizon line with a touch of blue. To add the trees on the horizon, he will use various colors from the palette. He dabs the colors randomly and allows the paint to spread. This will create soft edges, which helps to create distance. To harmonize the sky and the foreground, he uses the same purple and lilac to start painting the terrain in the foreground. The paper is still very wet, so he uses short, quick strokes to add the paint and then leaves it to mix on the paper. He uses the red premix to bring in some brightness and contrast. Use a tissue or a clean dry brush to mop up any excess water near the tape. It's important to do this as too much moisture near the tape may cause bleeds and ruin your perfect border. The paint has settled a bit now and he adds a bit of ordinary table salt to create texture.
Allow the paint to dry thoroughly. Brush off the excess salt once the painting has dried. The salt has created beautiful patterns of light which you can now use to create flower patches or to resemble patches of grass. Heinrich mixes a lighter green by adding more Indian yellow to a dollop of the green premix. He uses this to glaze the entire foreground. Remember that your painting should be bone dry before you do this to avoid runbacks or blooms. The glaze helps to knock back the starkness of the salt a bit. He also adds a light layer of water to soften the edges of the foreground. Here he adds some of the darker color to create shadows on the horizon line. You will notice that this layer forms hard edges in some places as the paint runs up to the edge of the water line. This brings some of the bushes a bit forward as they create a contrast between the soft edges of the distant background and the new layer he has painted. Allow the painting to dry again. Heinrich wants to create a bit more dimension in the background, so he uses a damp tissue to soften some of the hard lines on the left. Now the bushes on the left look slightly more distant than those on the right. He uses the green and grey to smooth out the horizon line, but it does not disturb the undulation of the terrain. He adds another layer of the greens to build the terrain a bit more. The variety of the greens that he gets through the layering helps to make the terrain more natural. He uses the colors on the palette to add a few grasses to give more definition to the foreground and he uses the patterns made by the salt to guide him.
He mixes some grey, permanent rose and Indian yellow to create a brownish colour for the fence in the background. This fence is far away, so don't be too precise. A few random strokes will give your eyes plenty to work with. He uses the brown to add a few shadows to the terrain as well. He also adds a few more low shrubs to create interest. To add a more prominent focal point, he adds the tree to the left. He uses the dark colours for the trunk and branches and adds a hint of green to make it more natural. He varies the thickness of the branches to give the tree dimension. Dry brushing helps to create natural looking foliage. He uses the belly of the rigger to add the leaves. The paint is slightly drier than what he used elsewhere, so the brush strokes produce a broken image, giving the illusion of loose leaves. He also varies the colors to make the tree look more realistic.
He grounds the tree by adding some darker paint underneath to give the illusion of a shadow. To balance the composition, he paints a smaller tree on the right using the same technique. The two trees have hard lines and lots of open spaces. This lets the sky shine through and it brings the trees more forward, which helps to create dimension. To add a bit of light, he uses white gouache. This technique gives that something extra to an otherwise ordinary painting. It is important not to fiddle too much with your painting, but one should always be aware of what you can do to give it that extra touch of interest. Adding light with gouache or some bright yellow can make a world of difference. Please comment on this painting and let us know what you think of the use of lilac in the sky. It is always interesting to hear from our viewers. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.